Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Doyle, and I am a co-founder and the Vice President of Customer Success and Support at InspectPoint. I know that over the last couple of days, we have experienced some changes to our everyday um, ways of doing things, um, whether that's personal and work related. Um, and with that, I thought now might be a good time for us to just um, give you a little bit and give you some tips and tricks on utilizing InspectPoint while working remotely or at a more scaled back um, office setting. InspectPoint is designed to be accessed anywhere at any time. So utilizing and accessing the system in your office will work just the same as at home. Um, so just hitting that URL um, and you'll have access to everything. There's nothing installed on anybody's computers or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about not being able to access the back end of InspectPoint. But what I did want to cover today are some tips and tricks for staying in communication with each other. Um, I know that by working in an office, it's really easy to just sort of, hey, turn around and talk to so-and-so behind you, um, or you know, get up and walk down the hallway. But if you are experiencing a more scaled back office setting or you are working remote, um, staying in communication with both each other, or I guess everyone in the office, as well as the technicians um, is really important during this time. I um, also want to go over some quick best practice tips for maintaining reports and along those same lines, suggestions for your statuses, maintaining those statuses and then even building upon that a little bit more. Uh, being able to clearly define user roles in the back end. So who will do what um, and that way everybody knows what's going on, especially if there's more than one back end user um, and once again, if you're not in the same office with one another, um, having that that time to um, be able to talk to each other about, oh, hey, did you do this or not do that? Uh, having clearly defined roles will help that. Um, and then along those same lines, the notifications feature, really going into the notification settings area and adjusting the settings so that you're really only being notified of things that are important to you and that you need to know. So with that, I really just wanna jump into the product really quick. Um, so let me just get out of this and into the product. So one suggestion that we have for communication, maintaining communication, most specifically with the technicians in the field. Now, of course, you know, there's still phone, there's still email, um, you know, you can still text and do all of that. But if you wanted to try to utilize the inspect point platform a little bit more, there's um, a, a new feature that came out with the with the latest release that now when the technicians submit back a tech message, you're notified of that alert. At the same time, tech messages are not just for technicians to be able to submit notes back to you, but it's also a way for you to communicate with the technician as well. So on your building, you will see your tech message tab here. This message right here, like I said, is where the technicians can submit notes back to you. They're date and time stamped. And now when they submit a, um, a note back, you'll be notified via that bell icon in the upper right hand corner. Just like they can leave you messages, like I mentioned, you can leave them a message. So if you wanted to say, you know, spoke, with Bill, need you to arrive 15 minutes early for security. If you add that and save it, you go back to that tech message area, your note is gonna show up and it'll say your username. You are signed in with your email, so it'll say that you that you added that. Now when the technician is out in the field, they'll be able to see that note. So really utilizing that tech message feature is a great way for you to be able to still continue to communicate with the technicians should you not wanna do through email, phone, or text or anything like that, but try to stay inside the inspect point product. I would also recommend that the technicians use this to send any notes back to you. Now along the same notes, there are, um, inspection notes that can come back as well. These inspection notes are usually tied to the inspection itself, whether it's a deficiency um, or anything along those lines. But utilizing internal notes is what we tend to recommend if anything is being updated, if parts are being ordered, anything along those lines 
internal notes is a great way to also communicate with each other. So technicians might be sending back internal notes for parts that might need to be ordered or to let the office still know about things that are going on. Now the office can also update internal notes. So say you are on an inspection and you wanted to add something in regards to or in relation to a deficiency or a question or whatever it might be. Utilizing that internal notes feature is a great way to be, stay in communication with each other. So if you've made an update to something you want everybody else to know, but you don't want your customer to know, going in and updating those internal notes that are on a question. So internal note right here will help keep everybody in the same page. Now, kind of jumping to the statuses a little bit, just because I think this is in relation to a lot of those questions at updating notes. Um, and in, in updating tech messages and staying in communication with each other through the various note features that exist inside of InspectPoint, it's important to also maintain statuses. Um, so if you are going inside of InspectPoint, you're looking at waiting review inspections, you may need additional information, you are done with a report, like I said, this comes into a lot of play, especially as you may not be close to some other people in the office, and it might not be as easy to just sort of, you know, say, hey, did you change the status of this inspection? So maintaining your statuses, making sure that when an inspection report comes back, you are reviewing the waiting review inspections and moving them out of waiting review into complete if they are done, or maybe you might need additional information, maybe you um, need to, you know, speak with someone else. So identifying potential uh, alter, alternative uh, statuses is also could be helpful for you. But making sure that everybody is on the same page, at least making sure that you change your waiting reviews to complete or out of the waiting review status so that if multiple people are in the back end, multiple people are not generating the report and causing any sort of duplication or confusion inside the in, inside your instance. Along the same lines, it's really important with deficiencies that you're starting to really utilize the statuses inside deficiencies. So if you're using our deficiency and proposal feature together, like I've mentioned on, on previous ones, that's a whole feature in itself. And I am actually gonna do one of these on just features uh, on the proposal and deficiency feature, how that can also sort of help generate some revenue during this time as well. But utilizing this resolution status so that way not only everybody in the office knows what's going on but also everybody in the field knows what's going on so if you're identifying deficiencies you're utilizing our proposal feature these statuses are changing automatically if you are not utilizing the proposal feature inside of inspect point that is okay however i do recommend that you are at least updating the statuses to indicate that you have created it out for a quote and keeping those up to date, whether it's been accepted, it's been denied, it's been resolved. The technicians are out in the field and they are made aware if there are open deficiencies on the building. The more information they have, such as what is the status of this deficiency when they're looking at it, um, do they need to resolve it? Um, has it been resolved and it just hasn't been resolved in the back end, then the technician can resolve it in, in the field. But having the statuses of the deficiencies also helps cut down on a lot of back and forth. It also helps kind of cut down on duplication because should someone in the office or someone on the sales team be quoting outside of inspect point, it's just very important that you keep those statuses up to date. Once again, cuts down on back and forth, cuts down on confusion and cuts down on the duplication. Now, on the reports side as well, some suggestions that we have for reports, and this will hold true since if you've worked with me for uh, a couple of weeks versus a couple of years, um, I always, always push utilizing the display name field on here. I personally think that even if you're not utilizing our customer portal feature, that column right there allows you to put some information in regards to the report. So what I mean by this is, let's just say that this JD Yoga building, the report is generated, I'm working remote, I have another person working with me, I know that I'm handling all of the reports, but maybe they're gonna be taking over after the report by doing quoting of deficiencies and sending out invoicing. 
So I need to let them know that this report is ready for them to download to maybe attach to the invoice. So I am going to, in the edit details page, just say annual report, you know, ready for download. Or I could just say annual report complete. Or just simply putting annual report March 2020 is the indication to the office that this is ready to go to the customer. Once it has a display name, it's ready to go. So I could just simply update. If I want this to go to the customer portal, once again, I'm gonna do another webinar just on customer portal, um, sort of a refresher um, in the next week or so as well. But if you want this to go to the customer portal, you would just select that box and this name right here would appear in your customer portal. I'm not gonna update that into customer portal, but what I am gonna do is update this. So now if you come up with a process that display name is the indication that they can come in and download the report, then they can click download, view the report, download it and attach it to the proposal, or sorry, to the invoice. Now, along those same lines, I wanna make sure that by doing this, adding this name here, that I go in and change the status to complete. Some workflows inside of InspectPoint include changing the inspection from pending to scheduled once the date is scheduled. This technician starts the inspection, it triggers to start it. The inspection is sent back to the office, it goes to waiting review. Someone in the office uh, generates the report, reviews the report, changes it to complete, and then someone comes into the back end who only deals with the money side of everything and changes, downloads the report, and then changes the status to invoiced. So if in whatever your workflow is, just be consistent in your statuses and be diligent with those status updates. Which brings me to those clearly defined roles inside of InspectPoint. Um, there are a lot of instances that have more than one backend user, and that's fine, right? We all have different things that we need to maintain and handle with inside InspectPoint. Knowing what your role is, how it plays into, into the overall functionality of InspectPoint just as important. Um, so before you go remote, while you're remote, sort of clearly outline, okay, I'm going to be the one generating the report, getting it ready to go. And then, you know, hey, Sue, you're gonna jump in afterwards and I'm gonna have all of the statuses ready for you so that you can utilize. And I'll link my tips and tricks video in the, the description below, um, but utilizing my favorite tab, this inspections tab. So, you know, Sue here can come in, find all those complete inspections, know which one she needs to generate the invoices for. And then once they're generated, she can up to update those statuses and they can change to invoiced, right? Then everybody knows the invoice is out the door. So while it is still utilizing the same, same features, right? Nothing's changed with the functionality of InspectPoint. You can still access it from everywhere. A lot of it is, is just understanding your role and function and making sure we're really diligent about notes, updating, statuses, and things like that. Now, lastly, I wanted to just kind of quickly talk about the notifications feature. So this notifications feature up in the upper right-hand corner via this bell icon. Some people have this set to only receive notifications and be alerted about what you need to know about. Um, a lot of sometimes too, I find that this is a kind of a forgotten about, like, yeah, 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 I see the bell up there. Yeah, I've got a lot of notifications, but whatever. I'm suggesting that during this time that you sort of look at setting this to, to more along, like I said, what you need to be notified about. So in this upper right-hand corner is what we refer to as the settings area. Up here, there's different status areas, settings area for your equipment, settings for your proposals, and you'll see your notification settings. When you click on notification settings, by default, you are subscribed to all of the following notifications. If you do not need to know about any of these items, then what you will do is just come in and uncheck those items. Maybe I only really need to know anything that is in regards to inspection reports or inspections. So I am going to go in and adjust and subscribe to only those and update my settings. 
Now what I can do is, is I can, of course, come up and look at my notifications. I can see all of my notifications. Okay, this is great. And now going forward, I have a fresh set of notifications. My notification settings are adjusted and I'll only be alerted of the items that I have subscribed to be alerted to. So these are just a few quick items that I, I wanted to kind of just put, put out there. Um, like I said, it, it could be that you are working fully remote. It's just a scaled back office situation. Um, but just from working remotely, our Inspect Point team is remote right now. Um, and just thinking of things that we do on, on, a, on a daily basis lately um, that could be helpful to you, I thought I'd hop on real quick and kind of show those to you. So normally at this point in time, I would ask if there was any questions, but um, right now, if you have any questions, if you want to review any of the items that I've discussed, if you have any questions about, hey, listen, half my office is remote, I'm running into some situations, X, Y, and Z, shoot us an email at support at inspectpoint.com. We are happy to help in any way, shape, or form, um, especially, like I said, things are a little up in the air right now. Um, we are, like I said, remote, but we are up on support. Our email, support at inspectpoint.com, is still being monitored um, during regular business hours. Our phone is still open, and um, our live chat is also available as well. Um, so, like I said, um, just wanted to get this out there really quick. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. And I just want to wish you and your loved ones a very safe couple of weeks or however long this might last, but just stay safe. And um, if you need anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you.